Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Story number one. They counsel me. They understand. Written by Echoing Cascade. Captain Sol was watching a movie with the Colon delegation. And as the credits began to roll, he dreaded the inevitable deluge of questions that would follow. If I get my hands on the numbskull who perfect memento of all things to show the aliens, I'm gonna kill him. Slowly. Selene of the floating clouds approached the human captain, head tilted and right index finger under her blue head. I wonder what she's going to ask first, about the fact the movie is shown out of order, the fact that the main character can't retain information, how he tells his own story without knowing it's about him. Selene. Why did no one try to exercise the man with the deficient memory? Okay, what the hell? Captain Solomon raised a hand and opened his mouth, just to close it right away, words fading him. Solomon, ah, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, what? The man kept hearing the demon's voice in his head when trying to figure things out. The captain's confusion increased. What is she talking about? Wait, she couldn't mean... Do you mean his inner monologue? When he heard his own voice in his head? Selene nodded. The captain relaxed. Oh, that's normal. That's just the voice you hear in your head when thinking. Selene looked rather worried and took a few steps away from the captain. Do you have such a voice in your head? Yes. Selene lifted her hand and her bodyguards grabbed the captain by the arm. I have the rituals for exorcism. We will require half of one of your hours and an empty room. The crew watching the scene went from snickering at the discomfort of the captain to getting ready for a fight. The captain tried to defuse the strange situation. What does this exorcism entail? A series of chants followed by a hymn that must be performed live. The captain gave his crew a look that screamed, I'll be fine. Let's humor them. And the crew sat down. Still worried, but they had their orders. Half an hour later, the captain left the cargo room and had been hastily repurposed by the colon for the impromptu exorcism. Annie, the captain's second in command, was waiting outside the room, and when the door opened, what she saw worried her. Captain Solomon walked out in a daze, his eyes unfocused. What the hell happened to him? What did you do? She moved to grab Selene, but the captain snapped out of the fast enough to stop her. It's okay. I'm okay, or I will be, I, I think. Maybe. Sir, what happened? Are you sure you're okay? I, I... I can't hear it anymore. Hear what, sir? She had an idea of what he meant, but she couldn't bring herself to say it out loud. The, the voice in my head... When I think now, it's like a series of slides or scrolling text in my head. It's strange, but it feels right, you know. Ambassador Selene, is he alright? Selene nodded solidly. We excised the demon that had been subtly twisting his thoughts. Annie looked at her captain, who was looking more and more like his old self with every passing second. Selene continued. These entities are parasites that enjoy inflicting pain, real or imagined on sentient beings. The ritual to erase them is well known to our people. Hearing voices in your head, especially your own, is a clear sign of possession. Annie's mind was a mess. Nothing she had heard in the last few minutes made any sort of sense. It's BS! She's obviously lying! Kill her! She pushed the thought aside with some effort and spoke. But all humans have an inner monologue. Celine looked shocked and her bodyguards moved between her and Annie. Annie stepped back, her mind racing. This can't be right. She messed with the captain's mind. She's trying to mess with mine. I have to kill them now. Annie shook her head. Are you saying that our entire species is possessed? I am afraid so, yes. Annie looked at the captain, who shrugged and looked at her with a yeah. Seems like it. At which point the human race was as a whole heard the same thing. Crap! They found out! Feck it! All know what to do! The rituals to rid humanity of their demons took years to complete. 
Reaching all individuals was an arduous task, but the Kurlon were more than happy to help, and those who had been freed joined them after noticing their mental health greatly improving. But the biggest hurdle was what was heard in the mind of all humans still possessed. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you, never gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye, never gonna tell a lie and hurt you. Over and over again, until freed from their deep. End of story. Story number two. I'd Rather Die. Written by Teller of Tall Tales. I'd rather die than do nothing to help. A single statement as he disappeared into the sprinting, screaming crowd. My heart shattered into a million pieces when they wheeled his burnt and bloodied body from the boat on a stretcher. Have you ever been in love? No. Not the kind that makes you feel insect in your stomach. The kind that sends lightning through your bones and makes your heart beat like thunder. I was once the stupid human. A beautiful, brave, stupid human. I could never forget him. Couldn't forget the way his platinum white hair flowed in the strong breeze. His eyes so full of that manic spark that made him love everyone so much more than he loved himself. You always think that you're safe when you're at a shopping center. There's security everywhere you look. A menagerie of different species all milling around in a soft breeze. All it takes to disturb that is a single blaster shot. I didn't know what that was at first, but when I saw the look on James's face, I realized. James ran with me until we got outside the center. Then amongst the Russian crowd, he stopped. He turned holding both my hands and looking softly into my eyes. I have to go back. I've got to stop them before they hurt any more people. I almost screamed my refusal. You're going to get yourself killed. Someone else will. There was a look in his eyes. One I only saw when he had those awful nightmares that made him wake up screaming and tearing at the sheets. He leaned in gently and pressed his lips on the tip of my beak drawing me in for a hug as he whispered into my ear, I'd rather die than do nothing to help. Then, like that, he let go of me and disappeared against the flow of the crowd, fought against the flow trying to follow him, but eventually I let myself be carried away by the rest. Now, as I watch the news, they praise him as a hero. The footage from inside the mall played on loop. A full minute of heroism. I couldn't peel my blotchy eyes away as I sat on the couch in our home. He jacket around my shoulders like a ghostly hug. James burst into view in the main atrium. A dozen beings bound and held captive by four towering masked cloaked figures. There was a broken mop handle in his hands. The jagged broken end leveled at the closest masked figure's chest. He ran the being through with a yell, catching them by surprise. He wrenched the mop handle free, greenish viscera, coating the jacket. The surprise didn't last long as the other three attacked him, two with the threatening-looking jagged blades. The third raised their laser rifle a few paces from James. Face, a death mask of calm, James took a bright blue bolt of light to the chest, flesh searing as he stabbed one of his blade-wielding assailants through the neck, kicking the other back as he struggled to free the makeshift spear. The blaster bolt seared across his face, making him fall to his knees, clutching his burnt face. His knife-wielding assailant lunged on top of him, driving the blade deep between his ribs. James cried out in pain, hands scrabbling for something on the ground, as his knife-wielding assailant pulled the knife out, aiming for another stab. James's hand swept up, jagged knife in hand. He drove it into the assailant's neck. Purple blood splattered his face as he kicked them away. Standing, he took a searing ball to the knee and stumbled. He fell to one knee as his masked assailant stepped forward, pressing the muzzle of the laser rifle against James's face. 
A flash of rage crossed the unburned half of the face, and he lunged, grabbing and ripping the rifle from the masked being's hands before swinging it like a club and striking the last masked being over the head. The last assailant crumbled. James looked around at the hostages who stared at him like a monster. Hobbling to the nearest one, he cut the bonds holding their hands before passing them the jagged knife. He stumbled, then he fell, tumbling onto his side, his eyes staring unseeingly as the freed hostage began freeing the others. I laid down and rolled over as the footage looped again. I couldn't watch him die anymore. I pulled his jacket tighter around me, and for a moment, I could feel his warmth arms around my shoulders again, hear him telling me it'll be all right, that he'd rather die than let anyone hurt me or some innocent bystander. It only made my broken heart crack a little more, knowing how much he meant by it. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon, WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.